This is an example problem using Kepler's third law, which is also known as the law of harmony. In our solar system, the dwarf planet Ceres is observed to have orbited our sun 1,682 days. How many times farther away from our sun is Ceres than the Earth? All right, so if I'm looking at this, let's describe some of the definitions of the objects. Anything that's moving, we're going to call that a satellite. So whatever's doing the motion around something is the satellite. So I've got three satellites here, a blue one, a green one. We'll call those natural satellites. They might be asteroids or planets. And then I've got a man-made satellite, which is the one that has little paddles on it. Those are like solar panels. But they're all satellites. The body is the object in the center that's not moving relative to the motion of the satellites. Now, in this picture, it looks like everything's kind of in the same plane or like it's on a plate. But it doesn't have to be. I could have an object like this red one right down here, and it could be in a completely different plane than the others. So all these satellites, what they have in common is they have this constant called Kepler's constant. And Kepler's constant is this. Kepler's constant is Ks is equal to period of motion squared, capital T squared, divided by the radius cubed. What it means is that my red object, my green object, my blue object, and my man-made satellite, if they, as they orbit this body, if you take their period squared divided by their distance cubed for a closed orbit, it'll give you a number. And that number is the same for all of them. Now, that's for this body. If the body's the Earth, it'll have its number. The moon has a, a constant that's different. So it's a constant for the moon. The Earth has a constant for the Earth. The Sun has a constant for the Sun. Mars has a constant for Mars. The asteroids have their constant. So the constant is only constant for the object. It's not universal across space and time. All right, so how do we use this? All the bodies that are, oh, sorry, all the satellites that are orbiting the same body have the same constant. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to compare Ceres with the Earth. So in other words, I'm going to do this period of motion squared for the Earth divided by the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the Sun cubed equals a constant and that same constant is also good for Ceres. So the period of motion for Ceres squared divided by the radius between the center of Ceres and the center of the Sun cubed. So they're going to be equal to each other because Ceres is a satellite to the Sun and Earth is a satellite to the Sun. So the two relationships of t squared over r cubed are going to be equal to each other. So that's how we use it. We set it up equal to each other. All right, in this question, let's look at my givens and see what I have and see where I'm going for this. Um, I'm going to write my givens on the left-hand side here so I can have some room. So here are my givens. Um, I know that the period of motion for series is given to be 1,000. 682 days. The period of motion for the Earth is one year, but since they give me the series and days, I'm going to do the Earth and days as well. And I'm just going to leave it as 365 days and not worry about the fraction. And the distance, I'm comparing it to the Earth. So there's a great unit for that, and that's called the astronomical unit. And it was made just to make math easy and for applications like this. So the distance between the center of the Sun and the center of the Earth is 1 astronomical unit. Now we actually have a me measurement for that in meters, but we'll just call it 1 AU. It's easy math. And what am I looking for? Let's see. I'm looking for the distance between the center of the Sun and our dwarf planet Ceres. So here we go. Here are our calculations. All right. Let's figure this out. So I've got the room to do all the math here. Um, my goal in all this is to isolate RC. So what I'm going to do is a little cross multiplication. I'm going to go this way, and when I do that, that's going to say radius of the Earth cubed times the period of motion of series squared, and then I'll go the other cross direction, and that's going to say the period of the Earth squared equals the radius of series cubed. Now when I do this, these two are equal to each other. Okay, so let's keep solving this. So I'll put this down here as radius of the Earth cubed, period of motion of series squared equals period of motion of the Earth squared times radius to series cubed. And I'm looking to isolate the radius to series, the RC to the third. 
So to do that, I've got to divide both sides by the period of motion of the Earth squared. So that means that RC to the third is equal to the radius of the Earth cubed, period of motion of series squared, divided by period of the Earth squared. Now to get RC all by itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cube root both sides of the equation. So I'll cube root the radius to series, and then I'll cube root the other side of the equation. Now when I cube root a cube, it just gives me the original value. So that's going to give me RC, and that's equal to, and I'll just write this out so it's a little bit neater, radius of the Earth cubed, period of motion of series squared, divided by period of motion of the Earth squared. All that is going to be under the cube root. There we go. It's a little pressed for space, but I think you got it. All right, so now I've got RC and I've got an equation using the variables, so I've isolated my unknown. Time to put the numbers in. So, let's see. RC is equal to radius of the Earth. Remember, that's going to be 1AU, and that's going to be cubed, so that's easy. 1 cubed is 1. And the period of motion of series squared, so that's 1,682 days squared. The denominator is the period of the motion of the Earth, also in days. The key thing about using this law of harmony is you've got to make sure that the units are the same. So whatever the units are for the period of motion for the Earth, it's got to be the same for series. And the distance has to be the same as well. All you do is make sure the units match. They don't have to be standard, they just got to match. Okay, so period of motion of the Earth needs to be in days, so 365 days. Don't forget, that's cubed. And all of this is cube rooted. So I did that last, so I'd have room to draw it. Cube rooted. All right, so on my calculator, what I'm going to do is I would take the cube root. My calculator screen would actually look something like this. I'll hit the cube root. To hit the cube root on a graphing calculator like a TI-8483, I'll hit the key that mat says math. Uh, math is on the left-hand side. It's the third key down the left, and it gives me a catalog, and then I'll type in the number three, and that'll actually come up as the cube root. So my calculator screen would look something like this. Cube root. And then what I'll do is I'll type in 1682, hit the squared key, and cube root will extend out. And then divided by 3, 6, 5, hit the square key, and my cube root will extend out. And then when I press enter, it'll give me the answer. And so the answer for this is, uh, with our three, if we do three sig figs, it'll be 2.77 AUs. And that's right. That's where Ceres can be found. That happens to be the region where we have the asteroid belt. So Ceres is the biggest object in our asteroid belt.